It's another edition of Time About the Movies, and today we're taking a look at the films of October 12, 2001. And we've got four films to look at today, so let's go ahead and jump on on into one. And we'll start off with the biggest new release of the weekend, and that is Bruce Willis, Billy Bob Thornton, and Kate Blanchett in the crime comedy Bandits. So after busting out of prison, Bruce Willis and Billy Bob Thornton play two robbers who are on the run and out of money. That changes when they devise a scheme to place bank managers under house arrest the night before they rob their banks. But success as the infamous sleepover bandits isn't the only change in store for them. As they cross state lines and federal lines, they meet another bur another bur burglar, a, a, not a burglar, but a sexy, eccentric housewife played by Kate Blanchett, whose indecision as to which of the two bandits she, she wants could spoil their partnership for good. This is directed by Barry Levinson, who... Honestly, kind of at this point of his career, he was kind of in a downward slump. I mean, he hadn't made a great movie since Wag the Dog. And even some of his best some movies that he actually did make that were actually pretty good, uh, like uh, Liberty Heights, weren't big hits and really were kind of overlooked. And nobody really even knew they existed until he was found by the video store. I mean, a lot of his best later stuff wouldn't come until he d started doing movies for HBO. I mean, you don't know, Jack is Grey, the movie he did about Joe Paterno was actually really good. In terms of the movies he put out in theaters, they were more miss than hit. There were a couple of little surprises here and there, especially his next movie, what we'll get to when we get to 2004, but this is one of those misses. It's a movie that I think has a lot of potential with the cast overall, but everything else about the movie is kind of generic. It's not really that great of a crime movie. It runs a little bit too long. It's over two hours long, and you don't buy into the chemistry between either Bruce Willis or Kate Blanchett or Blanchett or Billy Bob Thornton, and those are supposed to be your critical thing, things that are keeping the movie together, along with how they're going to pull off this heist. And honestly, the more I think about it, there really wasn't a whole lot of laughs I had with this movie either. Which is kind of like, eh, I mean, that was kind of amusing, but nothing really made me laugh out loud. And there was nothing about it that really made me say, I'm glad I watched this movie. It was mostly kind of a letdown, honestly, the more I think about it. It was a movie that... Basically, kind of was just here and there. It's not doesn't really have anything that makes it anything unique or stand out, and it just it just didn't work in the long run. I was really let down by this movie the more I think about it. And um, yeah, despite the good people that are in the cast, the director overall, it wasn't one of his better films. It was mostly it was mostly a letdown, honestly. The more I think about it, but um, but uh, that's bandits for you. So let's go ahead and move on to our next movie, which is Chris Kattan in Corky Romano. Chris Kattan's first real attempt to make a movie career after his time on Saturday Night Live. He plays the title character who is a veteran who is forced by his mobster family to infiltrate the local FBI facility to steal evidence incriminating his father, played by Peter Falk, of racketeering charges. And, um, too much of a little bit of blue streak in there, and I really feel like that's what's kind of the inspiration for this particular movie. Like, you have a criminal who... Well, not even, he's not even a cr criminal in this movie, but it has kind of the same concept here. I mean, in Blue Streak, a criminal has to infiltrate the police station to get information on where this diamond is. But here, it's this guy who has to go into the FBI, get this evidence that goes to get, that will p hurt his father in the long run. And um, it was an unexpected hit. It was one of those movies that you would almost swear from the trailer, from the c commercials, that this was going to flop from the get-go. But... Um, Made doubled money back at the box office. It was actually a surprise hit when it came out of the theaters. And everyone was just like, where the hell did this come from? Um, I actually remember going to see this in theaters back in, back in October 2001. And um, I don't know. I thought it was all right. As a 12-year-old watching it, I was just kind of like, eh, I got some laughs here and there. I, can, I find myself saying it's kind of fun. But the more I go back to it, the more I realize that it's probably not as good as I remember it. And... From the little bits I've seen from it, I haven't seen it in a long time, from the little bits I've seen from it, it definitely feels like a movie that probably would have been produced by Adam Sandler, but shockingly, this is not a Happy Madison production, believe it or not, even though two of the producers of The Waterboy are on it, but um, it just wasn't funny, man, like, it wasn't really that funny, it wasn't really that clever overall, it was a movie that was just kind of like, hey, let's see what Chris Kintag could do as a leading actor in a movie, and... I mean, he's not bad, but he ain't that great either, honestly. It's just kind of like, eh. Like, you're trying, man. I know you're trying, but it's just like, you're not really doing it for me, pal. But, um, again, that's just my personal take on it. But um, you have uh, Fred Ward, Vanessa Shaw, uh, Chris Penn, Richard Roundtree among the cast as well. And um, I don't know. Like, from what I remember from it, I thought it was kind of funny, but I have yet, I've yet to watch this movie since it came out almost 20, over 20 years ago. So I don't know. 
if it's if it's held up, probably not for the little bits and pieces that I've seen from it. But um, who knows? Maybe maybe I'm maybe I'm completely wrong on that. But um, so that's Corky Romano. So let's go ahead and move on to our next movie, which is Iron Monkey. I really need to do my research before I start looking these movies up. I thought this had Jackie Chan in it, but no. Uh, but it has Donnie Yen in it, and it's a Hong Kong variation of Robin Hood. The corrupt officials of a Chinese village are continually robbed by a mass bandit known as the Iron Monkey, named after the benevolent Divi. When all else fails, the government forces a traveling physician into finding the bandit. The arrival of the ex Shaolin monk, an evil Shaolin monk, brings the physician and Iron Monkey together to battle the corporate government. So, like I said, the plot is very similar to Robin Hood, and... It's mostly hyped up because of the fact that it has the same guy that did the martial arts work for The Matrix and Crouching Tiger, Hidden Dragon, two of the most significant action movies of the time period. Honestly, the only version I've ever seen is the American version, where they actually added more humorous scenes in there, so I guess that it was supposed to help the box office, but actually hurt in the long run. But um, from the little bits I saw, from, uh, from the one that I saw from the original version of it, the um, not the original one, the American version, I thought it was alright for what it was. I never saw the original Hong Kong version of it. But in the end, the film just kind of comes off as trying to capture the success of Crouching Tiger, Hidden Dragon from the year before. And I guess it ended up working when it was all said and done because the film did make money at the box office. But it wasn't, I, don't, I think they were kind of looking for the Crouching Tiger type of money. But it got favorable reviews and it was seen as a highly acclaimed film in the long run. So I guess it all worked out in the end. But, um,. Like I said, I've only seen the ori the American version of this. I've never seen the original 1993 version, so I can't really say for certain if that's better. Which I, I assume it's better because, let's be honest, most of the most of the original versions of these movies since uh, Rebel in the Bronx have been the best ones over the American versions. But um, from what I saw from it, I liked it. I thought it was all right, but um, I don't know. I'd have to see the American version to compare the two. But um, from what I saw, I liked it. So um, that is the Iron Monkey. So let's go ahead and move on to our last movie, and that is. David Lynch's Mulholland Drive. David Lynch, of course, the man that gave us his classics as Twin Peaks, Wild at Heart. And in this movie, it's the story of an aspiring actress played by Naomi Watts who newly arrives in Los Angeles and meets him with friends, an amnesic woman played by Laura Herring, who's recovering from a car accident. The story follows several other vignettes and characters, including Hollywood film director played by Justin Thoreau. Characters also played by uh, Ann Miller, Robert Forster, Mark Pellegrino. Um, this one is often considered one of David Lynch's best chronic achievements, and um, it's kind of hard not to see why. The movie is a very, is very much in a, in a world that David Lynch is much much accommodated for. It's a film that very much is what David Lynch is all about. It keeps all of the crazy twists and turns. It's all insane. It's all ridiculous. It's all over the top, but. It's also very compelling, too. Like, you get so invested in what the hell's going on with these characters because David Lynch does a great job of handling, you know, you know, he handles this source material very well here. And great cast of role here. Naomi Watts and R. Herring are very good together. They have a relationship that you can definitely believe in. The mystery overall is very good. The visual aspects are very well done. It's a very good film. It's a very solid film. It's definitely one of David Lynch's crowning achievements. And it was a film that helped... Uh, boost Naomi Watts into the stratosphere as a leading actress because the next year she would break out with the ring and then so on and so forth and um, it's a really good movie I can't recommend this one enough I pretty much said everything that has already been said already so um, yeah David Lynch's Mulholland Drive it's definitely really really good that's going to wrap up another edition of Time About the Movies. Next time we meet, we'll have five movies to look at, including Johnny Depp and Heather Graham in From Hell. We also have Drew Barrymore in Riding with Cars with Boys, the ensemble war film The Last Castle. We also have Richard Linklater's Waking Life, and also Dancing at the Blue Iguana. So five films we'll take a look at next time on the next episode. Uh, but until then, uh, thank you so much for watching. And if you want to see more videos like this, uh, please hit the place on the next page. Check out the previous episode, and also don't forget to hit the like and subscribe button if you want to see more videos like this on this channel. So with that said, I am off. I will see you guys next time, and until then, as always, take care.